Hello everybody and welcome back to Nancy Drew Mobile Mysteries Shadow Ranch. We are on a stakeout right now. So should we trade shifts or should Bess and Nancy both stay awake? Well if they both stay awake it's a game over. The two girls chat with each other quietly to stay awake and keep each other company. Bess almost goes to sleep. I wish Mary had left us some coffee. They run out of things to say, they listen to the clock, the clock, and soon both of them are fast asleep. Nancy, Nancy, Mary shakes the girl. Oh no, Bess says, we fell asleep. And you let the thief steal my mask, Mary says. This is terrible, terrible. We're sorry, Nancy says, this won't happen again. There won't be an again, Mary lashes out. I want you out of my shop now. Bess and Nancy call Dave to pick them up and return them to the ranch. Okay, so obviously, obviously, we don't want to both stay awake. We want to sleep. Okay, let's trade off, Bess Nancy advises. Okay, Bess agrees, but I'll stand watch first. If a ghost shows up, it'll probably be later in the night, and I don't really want to see it. Nancy has trouble falling asleep. Her mind racing with thoughts about the mask, ghosts, and robbery. She tries to distract herself by thinking about the dance and Dave, and she soon drifts off. Nancy, Bess hisses in her ear, it's time to wake up. Anything happen? Nancy asks with a yawn. No, Bess replies as she curls up in a sleeping bag that Mary provided. Soon Bess's breathing slows as she falls asleep. Nancy tries to keep still as possible, crouched behind the counter, but occasionally she rubs her limbs to keep their circulation going. Suddenly, she hears the bell above the door chime very faintly as the door slowly An odd shuffling noise emanates from the spot, but Nancy cannot see anyone come in. She slowly stands up to get a better look over the counter and sees a ghostly figure crawling on its belly towards the mask. It quickly rises, and Nancy sees that it is dressed in deer skins and wearing a gruesome-looking headdress with red slits for eyes and a gaping mouth. The creature opens the case and grabs the mask. But before Nancy can nab the intruder, Bess wakes up, sees the creature, and lets out a piercing scream. She runs in the opposite direction, falling over boxes while the strange figure dashes out of the store. Bess, you are my hero. That is very heroic way to catch the culprit, Bess. Mary opens her door and light streams into the room. Bess, are you okay? Nancy asks her friend, lying crumpled on the floor. I think so, she says, checking herself. What was that? I don't know, Nancy replies, helping her friend to her feet. But it got away with the mask. Oh no, Mary cries as she runs out to the courtyard. By then, all of the other shop lights have turned on, and the shopkeepers mill out in their robes with sleepy but concerned expressions. They pile into Mary's shop and learn about the robbery. What a shame, Mrs. Katsui consoles, rubbing her Pomeranian. You should get a dog to protect you. Miss Nank tut tuts over the empty case. You really shouldn't stay here any longer. You just bring bad luck. Mr. Delgado pats Mary on the arm. As long as you sell this type of merchandise, the ghosts will not rest. Miss Kell advises, While on the bright side, your insurance will probably cover it. Mary looks pleadingly at Nancy, who walks to the center of the shop. The thief is in this room, and I can prove it! Everyone gasps, and Miss Nank angrily says, How dare you make such an accusation! Alright, so who stole the masks? Was it Katsui, Nank, Delgado, or Kell? I'm going to have fun and show you all the wrong answers. The correct answer is Mr. Delgado. Mr. Mingle growls at Nancy while everyone awaits her explanation. It has to be Mrs. Katsui, Nancy says. Who else could make a ghost costume? Ghost? Mrs. Katsui asks in bewilderment. What is this about ghosts? I thought we were dealing with a thief, not a phantom. The police soon arrive and take everyone's statement. They discover that Mrs. Katsui was participating in an online Malyong tournament and has a strong alibi from three other witnesses. No charges are filed. Okay, let's try Miss Nank. Prove it, Miss Nank dares. You want to force Mary out of her store because she's underselling you. 
Well, she is, Mr. Delgado replies meekly. Maybe, Nancy replies, but explain why Miss Nank has a subscription to appraising Native American artifacts. So I can show Mary she's selling these items too cheaply, Miss Nank counters. The police arrive and despite their politeness, just don't agree with Nancy's deduction. Alright, so now let's accuse the third innocent person, Miss Kell. Everyone gasps again at such a suggestion. But Miss Kell is such a nice person, Bess states. It has to be Miss Kell, Nancy responds. She lives the closest to the shop and had the time to quickly come in and come out. The police soon arrive and take everyone's statement. Miss Kell is hauled away in handcuffs, but after passing a polygraph test, she returns to the store. Okay, fine. Mr. Delgado. It must be Mr. Delgado, Nancy announces to the crowd. Mary never mentioned to anyone that she saw a ghostly figure during the first theft, and Bess and I didn't mention ghosts either, but Mr. Delgado just said that the ghosts will not rest. Nancy walks confidently up to Mr. Delgado. Which ghosts are those? The ones you dressed up as to frighten us? This is preposterous, the accused man shouts. But if you think I'm the thief, please be my guest and search my store for the mask. You can even search my apartment. I guarantee you won't find either the mask or this ghost costume you're babbling about. All right, so Mr. Delgado fortunately incriminated himself. And he's basically told us that he hid the mask outside in the pavilion. So was it in the well? It must be in the well, Nancy announces. It's the only place nearby where the mask and costume could have been stashed. Nancy, Mary inquires, but before she could say anything else, the teen sleuth rushes off to uncover the well, only to find that it's not a real well. There's nothing in it. Well, let, let's try again, try again. Mr. Mingle's basket. It must be in Mr. Mingle's basket, Nancy declares, because Mr. Mingle's was a conspirator. Everyone rushes with her to look through the cushions as Mr. Mingle growls in anger. The only thing, the only thing Nancy finds is fleas and a couple of buttons. Ooh, Mrs. Katsui, you really need to give Mr. Mingles a flea bath. I'm sorry, nobody wants a Pomeranian covered in fleas. All right, let's try one last time. The mask and costume have to be hidden under the topiary. It's under the topiary, the one that's sickly and overwatered. I'm not overwatering it, Miss Nank protests. Nancy leads the group to the four bushes. You're right, you aren't. You gave each plant the same amount of water, but this one, Nancy refers to the sickly bush, must not have enough dirt underneath it to filter out the water. So then, it must have a false bottom, Mary deduces. Correct! I bet there's a hidden compartment in here somewhere. Everyone stares at Mr. Delgado, who grits his teeth. He lets out a sigh. Okay, I stole the mask and hid it under the topiary. Once the police left, I would have taken it out. And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids.